what is this lunacy? Why is yeah. this country consumed by this madness? Talking of which, let's move on to Crazy Ed. Uh, how many more jo jobs will be lost on the altar of his insane net zero zealotry? I mean, 1,100 van workers, car workers, will soon be out of work uh, because Vauxhall's van plant in Luton uh, will be forced into closure. By the way, not so long ago, this was a plant that was uh, uh, going to be expanded. The company were going to expand it. Then, to be fair, just to, just to uh, prove that all of our politicians are green claptrap lunatics, the Tories came up with this scheme, uh, the uh, requirement uh, to... Uh, that sales of cars must make up 22%. 22% uh, of them must be electric vehicles. 10% must be vans, electric vans. Now, uh, for every sale of non-electric vehicles outside of these restrictions, in other words, if they don't sell 22% and then they start selling more and more petrol and uh, diesel cars, each petrol and diesel car, the company will be fined £15,000. Now, it's 22% at the moment by 2030 it is 80% 80% they will be required now this plant is already closing uh, the what what these restrictions what these government diktats are are against the rules of market forces companies Private companies must be allowed to follow market forces. Why can't they sell 22% of electric vehicles? Because people don't want them. So they're being forced to manufacture vehicles that people don't want, and they're being fined for selling vehicles that people do want. Uh, this is the government wrecking our car industry. This is very serious. Yeah, it is really serious. And here's the irony. You know, if we'd actually stayed in the EU, which, as I'm sure most people know, is not something I was in favour of. I wanted <laughs> Brexit. Yeah. But we've actually gold-plated what anyone else is doing here. So the, we, the UK, having the freedom not to do this nonsense, having left the EU, has gone further than the EU on these restrictions. I think it's completely unforgivable. And as you said, this happened under the Tory government. It is a legacy of the Conservatives. Um, it would be marvellous, wouldn't it, to think that Ed Miliband might see the light and actually unravel this stupid rule. Uh, but I can't see that happening. And, you know, car manufacturers just have to cater to the market as it is, not as the government would wish it to be. And this just doesn't stack up for them. You know, to be fined 15 grand for selling extra cars beyond your target just doesn't work for them. And they can't, they simply can't make the economics of it uh, stack up. So what happens then? Well, jobs are cut, just as Rachel Weaves is going to find happens in so many other areas when you try and meddle too much with market forces and also when you try to tax people to the hilt and employers and so on what happens is jobs get lost and that doesn't lead to growth and uh, labor uh, the business secretary jonathan reynolds uh, he looks like a man uh, who's wondering uh, what ship it is he's on uh, because he's starting to <laughs> almost... Like <laughs> yeah, but no, but he's starting to sort of uh, seem almost human. So he did two things today uh, and indeed yesterday. Uh, he refused to go along with Rachel Reeves's lie that she won't impose any more tax rises because he knows she will. So he refused to rule out more tax. I don't... I don't approve of more tax rises, but uh, I approve of politicians being honest about it. She's lying. Uh, and the other thing he said uh, was, oh, we, you know, we really are going to have to have a look at uh, these uh, electric car restrictions uh, because he's worried. He's the business secretary. Th th this is just the start. This van, remember, this van unit, this van plant in Lut Luton, a year ago was earmarked for uh, significant expansion. One year later, it's being closed down. 
Uh, that's a snapshot of uh, a much bigger picture. More and more of this is going to happen. This, this will, unless we stop this maniac Miliband, our car industry is finished. He turns around and says, well, it's the difficult transition period. Uh, and don't forget GB Energy, uh, the new government energy company, will create 60, 650,000 green jobs. Well, what are they? What, what are you talking yeah. about? What is GB Energy and what are these know. jobs? I don't know. Does anyone understand it? Does anyone know what it is apart from three great British energy, three words? I don't know what it is. I don't know how it's going to help our country. Uh, but what I do know is that company bosses, big these big companies, whether they're manufacturers or whether they're in the service industry, are going to have to start getting a lot braver about speaking out and warning of the consequences for their sector of some of this environmental stuff. Um, as it happens, this particular company, the, the subsidiary of Vauxhall, um, that, that is affected by these job losses actually supported the legislation when it came in and no doubt are now kicking themselves. And I assume they supported it whenever it was that it was brought in because they felt they had to make the right woke noises about everything. And now that's come back to bite them really badly. So I would suggest that companies, instead of you know, spending ridiculous resources on endless um, environmental and ESG, you know, box ticking and uh, trying to play to the gallery on this. They actually get real and tell the government what the consequences may be of all this additional regulation, because it's no good supporting it because you want to sound, you know, really right on and politically correct and then coming back later and bleating that it didn't work out. Yeah, I mean, as I say, the, these uh, restrictions, these green diktats, uh, are flying in the face of market forces. You know, uh, as I say, co uh, private companies should be allowed to pursue their customers, should be allowed to pursue market forces. That's how they make profits. And if there are government regulations that literally stop them doing it and in fact make them do the opposite, these companies will die. And that's what's going to happen. And when we're talking about this idiot, this lunatic, this maniac Miliband costing jobs. Don't forget that when he uh, arbitrarily, uh, without really thinking, uh, closed down North Sea oil and gas exploration, uh, 100,000 Scottish jobs uh, were lost. It could be as many as 200,000. That's what this guy is doing. I mean, it, it's frightening. It is, and it's it's in so many sectors. I mean, you know, this government has made a great song and a dance of how many houses they're going to build, but the amount of regulations and box-ticking exercises they put on even small developments, in fact, maybe I should say especially small developments, because that's what we need if we're going to get house building. We need developments of all types in all sorts of places. But the hurdles that have been put in place of anybody wanting to get planning permission, you know, the amount of nonsense you have to go through showing that you're going to massively increase biodiversity with your housing estate mm -hmm. and you're not going to make your windows too big and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. It's completely makes the economics of it very, very difficult for all but the biggest operators. Uh, and the only, the last point I would make, uh, you know, and I'm on very dangerous ground here, is if a, a country like Britain, we're not the only country doing this, uh, is going to base its entire economy uh, on uh, the suggestion that there is ma a man-made climate emergency, then that man-made climate emergency must be 100% real. Uh, what you always get from the zealots, from the millibands of this world, is what you've got to understand is this. The majority of scientists do believe in man-made climate change. Well, since when was a scientific fact proved by a kind of democratic vote? There's no such thing. You can't have... A scientific fact is not proved by a kind of majority opinion. My uh, response to that is, well, what about the minority who don't believe it? You know, this, this is the, the craziness. There is no definitive proof that man is ruining the planet. 
uh, with its pollution. There's no definitive proof, and yet uh, we plough onwards ever deeper into this abyss of insanity, uh, of green madness, that, that I say will wreck this country, will wreck this country's uh, economy, no doubt whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, for the sake of balance, I will just say that, you know, it is true that the majority. Yeah, of... that's the. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Put, put, I'm not saying I know either way. I'm yeah. saying that I, when somebody tells me a scientific fact, I need it to be a fact, not just well, most people think it, some don't, but some do. That's not a fact. Well, I tell you what's not a fact is it's not undisputed by any means that even if there is man-made climate change, which I'm perfectly open to believing, that any of the measures that we're taking will make a significant difference yeah, yeah. in a reasonable time frame. That's the key bit. Let's yeah. I think we can park, you know, is man causing this or not? Man, woman and trans, whatever. Yeah. Are we causing this? In a sense... Who cares? Can we change it? Yeah, that's the I, I'm with you. Yeah, that, 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 I think, I think yes. you're right. I think is where you've sort of put me. That, that's what I'm kind of driving at. You know, mm. uh, do we know that everything we're doing is going to make any difference? What we do know is everything Britain is doing won't make a jot of difference uh, because we only produce less than one percent of the yeah. world's carbon emissions. Yeah. It's ridiculous. We are uh, our politicians are virtue signalling us into poverty. Look at us, we're leading the world. Big deal. Who cares? I don't want us to lead the world. I want to be richer and I want to be warmer. Stop all this.